Welcome in to The Realist Show on radio, your daily dose of reality radio. No sugar added. Positive solutions only. This is The Clay Edwards Show, <coughs> live in the clayedwardshow.com studios. Make sure you're checking out my website there, clayedwardsshow.com. No the in front of it, just Clay Edwards Show. We are live back in the studio with me. I've got Sean Yurtkron. Man, Love you're saying it. You're saying it right. Like two two uh, shows in a row. That's great. I like it. I like it. Look, man, <laughs> little last night uh, pivot on plans here with all the Jackson water drama going on. We thought it would be fun to have Sean back on the show as well as we're going to dive into some culture war stuff today too. We got a lot to talk about. But uh, good morning to everybody. It's Good Friday. I uh, hope everybody has big Easter plans this weekend. Uh, I know uh, I don't, <laughs> but I'm sure I will. Uh, I, I would definitely partake in some Easter lunch, maybe some Easter service if I can shake it off Sunday morning and get my butt to church like I need to. Uh, Hickory Ridge Baptist, here I come. Sean, you got any plans for Easter? Um, no, I haven't decided. I may go to church. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, you know, it's so crowded on Easter Sunday. That's my, that's always my uh, thing. And I haven't been in a while and I, I feel guilty when I just show up on Easter and I'm like, I'm here on Easter, you know, it's, it's, and, uh, I had that same conversation with myself on the way in. I, I, cause I was for three or four years there, man, I was in church every time the doors were open, mm-hmm. kind of burned myself out a little bit. Like I was in a competition right to go and then i said okay no small groups none of that anymore i'm only going to go to big church that's what i call service sure yeah i call it that too right and yeah, I was like, yeah. i'm only going to big church so i did that for a little while and you know I, i'm I, i'm kind of just an i'm like an addict i have to do things all mm-hmm. or nothing i've learned right and if i don't go all in i have a problem just kind of tiptoeing in and just doing big service and stuff so i got to figure out some kind of happy medium with church because i hate not being in church every sunday so well, I'm with you. I, you know, it's it's. Uh, but the, I, when you haven't been in a while, you're like, oh god, I don't want to show up. I'll show up the Sunday after Easter, so I don't look like that guy. And, I, you know? and I'm a front row. I love to sit on the front row. Mm-hmm. Like I don't sit. In, I don't sneak in the back and sneak in. And God bless you if you do. I get it. Uh, I sneak I, in every time. I'm not going to lie. That's me. Because I because what I would like to do is be able to sneak out when they start doing their you know the, the last stand up for the last four songs and right. sing stuff. Let me just go on a stand up to the car, you know. But um, I love sitting down. And I we got a old school pastor at my church. I mean, he's my age. I went to high school with me, bouncing bars with me. Uh, Terry Fan out of Hickory mm-hmm. Ridge. He will bring the hellfire and brimstone. It is not some of this modern uh, whatnot. I mean, he brings it. It's like, no. Where do you go to church at? He said? Hickory Ridge Baptist. In Where's Florence. that? Florence. Okay. Yeah, out down in Florence. Kind of out off White Road. Out on the sticks of Florence. But it's a huge church. I mean, thousand plus congregation. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a church in Brandon, too, that I want to go to. Pastor Frank Hornsby. Okay. Um, right there on 471 in Brandon, Life Church. Of, it's called Life Church of Jackson, but it's Life Church, but it's in Brandon. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, um, Pastor brings the brings the fire too, Pastor Frank, and he he's guest host on somebody's show on uh, Jameson's show. Here's some too. Okay, I mean he gets political. We we, we agree politically, mm-hmm. you know. So I and I so I, and I've been to a political rally or two at that church and had the opportunity to meet him. So it's piqued my interest in. Going to any ten sends me Bible verses every day too, which I really enjoy. So I, and it's so close to the house. I may dabble over there. They switch I may, up, huh? I switch may cheat up. on my church. There's a lot of people you see that uh, that will do that. They're like, well, we go to such and such a church. You know, this it's like they're dating around or something. You know, they, yeah. you know, they pick different churches. So, well, I think 100%. at the end of the day, as long as you're in a church home. And then getting in there and getting the word, mm-hmm. and I wonder if you know if it's good not to mix it up a little bit and kind of hear different perspectives. I agree, yeah, and stuff. So. I do that too with myself. I you know skip around to a few different ones when I you know when I go, which again has has been a few months, and that's why I probably will watch it on my iPad <laughs> this yeah. Sunday. I think. I, look, I, I tell you, I, I I had a meeting with my pastor. I was helping him get his podcast and stuff set up, and we were talking about <clears throat> the live streams and stuff. I was like, you know, I understand the necessity of it during COVID. But do you think it's hurt attendance now because people have kind of gotten spoiled? They know they right. can just cut on YouTube or Facebook and watch it live. And yeah. he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, well, at least they're getting it, though, right? Yeah, that's what I think about it. It's made it, you know, it made a reason you can't skip anymore, right? You're not skipping. I mean, you're going. You're watching mm-hmm. it on, uh, you know, on and you YouTube can tie, or whatever. And you can still tie through apps and mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Too, oh, they're so. going to get the tide. <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> the, I mean, that's, the, they're going to figure that out. The building fund. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to, I used to call it the church shakedown. <laughs> you know, that's what, you know, that's what I'd always call it, church shakedown. But, you know, they, they always talk about, like, growing up in, um, now, this is just me repeating what I've heard, people. Don't shoot the messenger. 
uh, talking about like in black churches, like the pastor just not even letting them out to that building. Going, just to <laughs> right. where, we're going to pass it around one more time. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, and I, that's been my experience with uh, most churches I've been to. It, you know, they, they're really play, they're a small business though, when you look at it. At I mean, the end of the a, day, they are. They're really a small business. I mean, they do need, it's not like they don't need the money. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I get it. In, energy ain't leaving the lights on. <laughs> Because, yeah, because it's a church. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So I mean, yeah. I get the reasons, but I mean, they're 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 pretty good. They should hire churches for you know to uh, outsource collections for other businesses because they're pretty good about getting their money. <laughs> that's a good. We're that's, first Baptist and collections. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, man. So look, let's dive in here. If you guys want to chime in today, it, you know, on my Fridays, it's a bit of an open forum, as Kim Wade calls it. I call it free for all Friday. Uh, we can talk about a little bit of everything, and we're going to today. The phone line is 601-879-0002. The Guns and Gear text line. Surprise, I hadn't gotten any text by now. 769-241-1944. 769-241-1944. Before we dive in, um, if you're looking for somewhere to eat tonight, let me get you to tell you, get out to Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's right out there at Fan and Mart on the res. They're open from 4 p.m. to around midnight or so. So if you get a late night hankering for some food, Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's has got you covered. Dine in, carry out, and delivery available. And uh, they, <clears throat> you can actually support two Clay Edwards Show sponsors in one fell swoop by ordering Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's from Take a Break Deliveries. Uh, download their app, and please use them. Also, they are hiring drivers out in Rankin County. So check that out if you get a chance. All um, right, Sean. Well, just one thing, Clay. We talked about this briefly, uh, and I didn't know the answer. I looked it up about the can the president be a uh, convicted felon and run for office. And apparently he can be a convicted felon and run for office. That's not mentioned in the Constitution. I guess the conventional wisdom, you're thinking, well, if you're a felon, you, you can't vote. So, or for most crimes, you can't vote. So you can't run for president. But apparently you can run for president. If you, so your buddy Napoleon, when he uh, gets convicted and you know, goes to jail, he, his presidential aspirations are not ruined. So he, he can know that. <laughs> we, okay, so well, he's already a convicted felon. Is he a convicted felon? Okay. Yeah, because he, was gonna, he wanted to run for office. And apparently the only one in Mississippi you can run for as a convicted felon is sheriff. Right, I knew. Actually, I think I did know that. That's a big joke, right? Right, yeah. yeah, like that, the you could, yeah that you could be sheriff and, and a, you know, but not mayor, right? Yeah, not well, right, no, not, not city council. Yeah, not, even though they act like convicted felons, but they're they're barely they're not. So you, you can't be one. I mean, you know, and now that this new president is being set, where we uh, persecute our political uh, enemies. How long is it going to take before somebody gets mad and starts realizing that these, all these, was well, particularly in Jackson and whatnot, cities similar to Jackson, that these politicians are committing multiple felonies every day in some of this stuff? I mean, I, surely it's going to come out that some of this stuff Chalkway is doing with these vetoes and this and that and the other. Some of this has got to be breaking the law. Yeah, I mean, I. I I, I don't know enough about that yet. Whether I mean, I think the one issue, the main issue I thought was funny is the, what the Supreme Court ruled on, and the fact that you know, he tried to veto a no vote. Yeah, right? explain, will you explain that? Because I'm just going to be honest here. I've seen that. I've read it. I don't understand it. Right. I, well, you and me both, because uh, the best analogy I can give you, let's say Joe Biden issued a veto on a bill that Congress never passed. Now, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what Chokeway did here. It's It doesn't make any sense. And this actually ended up in the Supreme Court. And that's where our tax dollars went with litigation regarding him vetoing a no vote that uh, is, is it just isn't something you could do. And the Supreme Court had to reiterate that. Yeah, you can't veto a no vote. And again, that my best analogy is Joe Biden vetoing a bill that Congress never passes. That is interesting. So where where in theory you would you could veto a yes vote. Right, correct, sure. So, so if they had voted yes on a contract, Chalkway could have vetoed it? Yes. So does he even have the power to do that? Yeah, I believe that he does. I think he can veto actions of the council, but he can't veto inactions of the council. And that was what, what he did, and that's what kind of put us in this position for so long. Wasn't the, Didn't a couple of years ago they talked about maybe trying to switch Jackson's form of government from a strong council, from a weak council strong mayor to a weak mayor strong council? There was... There, there, there's a couple of different ways you can. It, it sounds worse than it is, right? I, I think the city at one time and you hire a city manager, so mm -hmm. the, the transition from uh, administration to administration isn't so breakneck, and you spend the first uh, four years 
running where the bathroom is. Right. Um, I think, was it, and you were in Jackson before I was, before, you know, I grew up in Miami until 93, and I think Jackson at one time was on a city was a commissioner. commissioner. Right. Yeah, they were uh, commissioners. Fred Shank's dad um, was our commissioner at mm-hmm. one point, Doug Shank's, and there was a legendary uh, mayor's race here, um, Shank's versus Danks. <laughs> okay, and, right. And, I knew he, Del Danks, he ruled the city with a tan fist, they always said. Yes, right? yeah. and, and had, had, uh, had Mr. Shank's won, he would have been the first Republican mayor in the history of Jackson. Okay. Jackson's never had a Republican mayor. Right. It makes Even sense. I wouldn't think they would have ever. Through the Dixiecrat era, mm-hmm. and, and, which I never, I just assumed, surely, um, a predominantly white Jackson through the 50s, 60s, 70s. Right. But the, the <laughs> culture war stuff here, but he, but the Democrats were even the racists back then. So it would make sense that Jackson never had a Republican governor in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Well, I mean, it, I mean all Republican relates Republican mayor, I'm sorry. Right. It relate, you know, all relates to after, after Reconstruction and everything. Mm-hmm. The South was all Democratic until uh, John F. Kennedy and LBJ and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And that's kind of when that, those alignments shifted where the South moved towards becoming more and more Republican. I think, uh, was it Kirk Fordyce in 92 was the first Republican governor of Mississippi? Was it, this was, Reconstruction? it was Fordyce. I, I wasn't sure if he was the first or not. Right. That, that, yeah, that is just so interesting. Since Reconstruction. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Do we count anything pre Reconstruction. I, I, I couldn't even tell. I don't know who the governor was during Re- the Republican governor of Mississippi was during Reconstruction. Maybe a caller knows. They can call in and, and let us know. All right. So real quick, uh, back to take a break deliveries, guys. They have given uh, the Clay Edwards show its own discount code. It is um, if you use the promo code Clay six zero one, all caps, you're going to get five dollars off your delivery. Clay six zero one. Through Take a Break Deliveries, $5 off. Just got tagged in that post there. So thank you to Take a Break Deliveries. Download that app and go to takeabreakdeliveries.com. All right, let's take a break real quick. Come back. Let's dive into the Jackson Trash stuff. Breaking news, a new director over Waste City Waste has been named. And uh, we'll tell you who that is on the other side of this break. They, they have got the man for the job, and he lives in a trash can. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Edward Show. We are live here in the ClayEdwardShow.com studios on 103.9 WYAB. This segment is going to be brought to you by our friends down at Stonington Farm Beef. They're going to be up here, not today, but next Friday, making a delivery to the central Mississippi area. So get your orders in now at StoningtonFarm.com. That's Stonington with two N's. That is all grass fed, all grass finished, hormone and antibiotic-free beef. I've been eating on it for two months now. It's going to be hard to ever have to switch back to uh, store-bought beef if I do. Um, Try the uh, the ribeyes are fantabulous. The sirloin is great. I'm telling you, man, I have fallen back in love with sirloin and the ground hamburger beef, phenomenal. And if you want a good good, um, beef broth, they have really, really good bone broth as well. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm barely hitting any of the stuff they have available. You can check out their website, <clears throat> stoningtonfarm.com. Click on their cuts. It's got the price per pound, all of that stuff. You can give Katie Stonington a call. The phone number's there on the website. Customize you an order. Whether you want to get a whole cow, a half a cow, or just one dang steak delivered, you can do that as long as you go to their pickup spot. They come to about three or four different little locations here in the central Mississippi area. Uh, last time they came to Brandon, Florence, and Ridgeland. If you can't make one of those, I'm sure you can make one of those. They're, they're pretty centrally located. So check them out and experience the grass-fed difference. In a day and age where we need to support as many local businesses as possible, in a day and age where uh, things that go in our food is very questionable, you need to be eating as localized Know your farmer type food as possible. I know where I get my meat from. I know my farmer. I know my farmer that I get my eggs from. And I'm trying to get to know my farmer on everything else I get. It just makes a difference because I like to eat a lot. And, you know, when you eat healthy, when you eat healthier whole foods, you can eat more and gain less weight. That's kind of a win-win, ain't it, Sean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. So check them out. StoningtonFarm.com. You can also just Google it if you uh, can't remember the website there. All right, Sean, 
I made an announcement that Jackson has hired a new director of a uh, sanitation <laughs> And uh, he lives in a trash can. Um, you can go to the Save Jackson Instagram page, or I'll post it on my Twitter, too. They have hired Oscar the Grouch. Oh, man. I mean, well, that guy is an expert. He he knows his stuff about trash. He's been around since we were kids, Clay. You know? I mean, Hasn't aged a day. No, he looks great. Looks great. I mean, still green. Botox. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see here. I will post that on the Save Jackson Instagram page. I mean, uh, Save Jackson uh, Twitter, if you want to see that meme there. It's Chalkway introducing Oscar the Grouch at a city press conference. He looks very, very dapper. Uh, got the trash can and all up there. So uh, congratulations to uh, the mayor on making a great hire. Big splash. And I hear, I hear next he's going to bring in uh, Tony Soprano and the crew to uh, really uh, expedite negotiations with the city council. That's some guys that really know about garbage contracts. I made sure to tag the mayor in that uh, Twitter post. <laughs> Yes, now, so the, now Tony Soprano and them, they are going to be some tough negotiators. That's it. They know they know that garbage business. They're in waste management, as they say. And wonder, they may be partial to waste management because they're in waste management. I, I wonder if the mayor will have the audacity to call them racist. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, it depends on, it depends on who pays them the most, doesn't it, Clay? Uh, yeah. F- free to land. Free to what? Free to what? <laughs> Ain't nothing uh, free around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got a text um, about that Ashby Foote sent out. You might find this interesting. Uh, about the garbage disposal locations in Jackson. So starting today, there's going to be four dumpster locations in Ward 1 between 8 and 3 uh, three p.m., 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. One's at the Tisdale Library parking lot, and there's the Virginia College parking lot, Christ United Methodist Church on Old Canton Road, and Colonial Mart uh, close to Precinct 4. And you no pickup is going to occur over the weekend, but it will start again on April the 10th, and you can drop your garbage off over there. You know, did you ever think you would see the day that we'll use the Virginia College parking lot there, for example? <laughs> right. I know where you're getting I mean, at here. Because you've got Scrooges there in the parking lot. Right. right. It's right behind Outback and all that. Um, they, you would have multiple city dumps throughout the city. It's unbelievable. It really is. And and, and they're saying they're not going to pick it up till the 10th. That's right. The 10th. What's Today's the 7th. I guess that's Monday. T- yeah, t- t- yeah. I mean, I know that's not that far away, but so it's going to sit there and marinate. All weekend. Right. All weekend. Fortunately, it's going to be raining, so it'll help keep the... the oh, can you imagine if this were July? Uh, that's what I was telling somebody yesterday. If this were July, man, it, the city would be pretty rank by now. I know, look, I'm telling you, people, find you a 55-gallon drum, metal mm-hmm. drum somewhere, or a fire pit or something, mm-hmm. put it in your backyard, make sure your leaves aren't around, <laughs> and start burning that crap. We could put, we get some gloves with holes on them and start singing songs and yes. drink whiskey and stuff like that. It might be fun, you know. That, yeah, you know, I mean, New I'm, Jackson tradition. Make the best out of it, right? I mean, you, I, you got to. Yeah. I mean, what do you say at this point? It, w- what a joke! Uh, it's it's. Uh, did you see yesterday how Chokeway was asking to have individual meetings with the council members? It was like he was asking them out on a date. Did you did you I see did. that? I and did. some declined. Some like, now, nah, Chokeway, I don't know if I want to go to the bar with you. And some were just, you know, issued a statement. It was like he was getting a text, like, saying they were washing their hair. That's the way it kind of sounded to me. Like, they were like, eh, I'm washing my hair this weekend, Chokeway. We're not going to hang out. Well, I mean, what it sounds like to me is he's trying to get them in there individually to bribe them. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to bribe them, but well, muscle no, no. them, you know. Or... I mean, I don't want to make accusations, right. but, I'm saying, but that's just the vibe it puts off. Like, let me get you in here. He's the type that sue us if we did that. Yeah. You know, I feel like gonna... <laughs> let, me, let me find... Let me find what I can do to close you right. on this. What, what do you need from me? ABC. Always be closing. Always right? be closing. But he is not good at it. No. No. I mean, looking at the, the amount of stuff he does not get done, he's just not good at it. No, he's not. I mean, and you and I discussed this, I think, Wednesday and maybe just via text. Like, can anyone think, I don't know if there's a caller out there, what is the one thing he can do worse to mess up the city? I mean, we've made a list here, right? It's JPD's numbers are decimated. There's Crime is out of control. The, wa- the water plant was not staffed. We didn't have any water last summer. It's you know, still being worked on. And now there is literally trash in the streets of the city. All right, so, so I don't know what's next. What do you think's next, Clay? Okay, so their big thing is, like when I started the Save Jackson page, this whole Free the Land crew and Chalkway and all these people, they love to say positive solutions only. If you ain't got mm-hmm. a positive solution, you're just being negative. You're part of the problem. You know, don't, don't point out that we got problems. Have solutions for them. Right. Well, Jackson, per capita, deadliest city in America. Yep. Per capita, most violent city, most violent crimes in America. Not even per capita. The real deal, 
case per case number one STD. I forgot about that city in America. Put that out there, right? Um, I'm sure we're fattest too. I mean, <laughs> how can we not be? You know, teen pregnancy is that the next teen one? Teen pregnancy, <laughs> um, HIV, where well, that falls under the STD stuff. Right. The schools are a disaster. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how much that has to do with with, with with Chakwe, but we can leave him. We don't have to put that one on him. I guess you just just don't give him that. I mean, it's yeah. they've been a disaster for quite a while. It, so. it has. So here's my thing. What are they doing to address any of these situations? Oh, they, oh yeah, and then throw in the the police, the trash, the water, yep, the infrastructure. I mean, I got accounts, potholes, all that crap. Mm-hmm. What is being done to address anything? Right. That's. I, I thought about that too uh, last night. Can where are the, the positive solutions? And does anybody know? I guess we, let's reframe the question. Can anybody? state or a, a thing that he's done well is there one thing that he's done well because i don't know that anybody's ever told me that or i've ever seen that does anybody on the air know that one thing that he's done well we've got a caller here maybe he has an answer hey caller you're on there uh just real quickly he's still probably decimate the uh uh fire system like the firefighters things like that Oh, I'm sure if he hadn't already i mean i the jackson fire department has been been the, kind of the one shining light Hung up. I forgot uh, about that though. Yeah, the fire department, right? Yeah. Oh God, that that's almost as, that's almost scarier than the police department well, to it, some extent. Yeah, um, yeah. That's I guess that's the one thing I didn't think about. Uh, shout out to all my friends, and yeah. uh, I got a lot of we got a lot of followers with the fire department. Um, I didn't think about that either. Yeah, you know that's the one thing that that he hasn't completely decimated yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have somehow another screwed up building a fire station. They can't even, they can't move in. Which which one is that? One over in West Jackson somewhere. Okay. Uh, they, they they came they, they built it and the construction company walked off the job. Apparent allegedly, from what I saw on the news, because of a non payment. Right. Okay. So, and it's like this close to being finished. Jeez. I mean, uh, yeah. I just that's a great. Maybe he hasn't thought. Maybe he's like me and just didn't think about the fire department. He's like, oh wait. Yeah, just, fire <laughs> now you just reminded him. Great. There we go. No uh, more fire department. This how week. can we divert some of those funds to free land? Yeah, that's uh, you know I was saying that I think this week too. Uh, the only thing I think if he can do worse, he can go down to Greenwood Cemetery, summon the ghost of Eudora Welty, and she can come and tear up the water lines in the city. That's like the only thing I with the, you know taking a Ouija board out there, summon the ghost. The ghost comes out, rips up the water lines. Um, have you have you done that? Have you gone through Greenwood and spent some time over there? I drive by there, and you know it's so funny. I say that every time I drive by, which I drive by downtown Jackson pretty much mm-hmm. every day. I have to go to the post office every day, and and I always say I'm going to take a tour, and I never myself. But the reason I haven't, Clay, I'll tell you this story from my days working the DA's office when I was working there. Some people were taking a tour of the cemetery and got arm robbed in the cemetery. <laughs> and ever since I heard that story, I I haven't I haven't taken a self guided tour. Okay, so quick story time, but and then we got to take a break. Back during COVID, when Tater was doing his press conferences at MEMA every day and right. like the two o'clock press conference or whatever time it was, and so Mississippi basically shut down, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, that, whatever day that was, I guess I was off work on Tuesdays at the where I was working at the time. So me and the ex wife would, I got on the cemetery kick where I wanted to go, ur- my urban exploration kick. Yeah. And man, I used to go near a cemetery. They spooked me out. <laughs> and then finally I went to one and to learn how to fly my drone because I knew nobody would bother me there. And I was like, man, this isn't, really isn't that bad. It's kind of cool. So long story short, we end up at Greenwood Cemetery. Cool. Okay. And we almost get run over by Tate's caravan of, <laughs> of, of, of black SUVs getting to the press conference like it was a damn 911 convention. Right. And uh, like they were on the way to put a fire out or something. <laughs> and anyway, so we're there walking around, man. It was just really cool. Now, there's some meth zombies floating around out there that aren't in the ground. Okay. Have, have there's escaped. homeless people that are in the cemetery. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's some, and uh, again, not just your run of the mill homeless. These are the people that do dances at the gas stations. Homeless. These aren't the homeless guys that are actually making money. That you're talking about no, the guy that are, no, not the, no, the money no. makers. These aren't you. the homeless for a living, folks. Okay. These are the uh, meth zombies. I got you. you know, so you got to watch out for that. I mean, I kept my gun in my pocket, but man, it's it's worth going down there. Of course, they, the grass wasn't cut at that time; it was knee high. Mm-hmm. But you got the uh, the, the Civil War uh, veterans. Down there, the Confederate veterans down there. You've got Eudora Welty. You just got a lot of really, really old uh, plots out there mm-hmm. and tombstones and whatnot. And it's just neat to go look at the history. 
Then the <clears throat> the one over there on West Capitol by the zoo. Right, right. The, uh, the big, the huge cemetery. The, the out big, that one. the yeah. big one. And the name eludes me. If I hadn't, been uh, I know, about I, know. It, I just I'd forgot. It's by the golf course, right? Yeah, my grandmother's uh, buried there on my dad's side of the family. There are some legendary big money Jackson names out there in McRae's. Mm-hmm. Just think of one off the top of my head. It's really, really neat out there. Of course, it's in. It's in disrepair because they don't keep the grass cut there either. Or right. At least they weren't. I haven't been over there in a couple of years. But uh, I really recommend, you know, if, if you like history, get out there and check out these cemeteries. I think every citizen I read, I was going to do this Greenwood tour. Now I'm actually going to go do it because I'm going to take some time. There's and try a cool to do one this. in downtown Brandon, too. That's, uh, I've seen that one, yeah, sure. It's, it, if you don't want to have gunshots coming <laughs> you. don't you. want to get arm robbed in the cemetery. Yeah. Go to, Maybe go to start Brandon. there, beginner, you know, learn the <laughs> lay of the land. run for you. <laughs> Uh, right. I um I uh I read about it. Apparently, one time everybody in Jackson had a right to be buried in Greenwood Cemetery, and I could, I can't remember. I think that may have been up till the early 20th century, around the time. And I believe that black and white folks are both buried in that cemetery. I think that's accurate. I have to look that, but I remember reading about this not long ago. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I'm not sure about that. All right, this is the Clay Edwards Show, joined in the studio by Sean Yurtkaran. We'll be right back on 1039 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show, live here in the Clay Edwards Show dot com studios. And uh, this segment is going to be brought to you by our friends out at Guns and Gear, the proud sponsors of our Guns and Gear text line. You can get out there this weekend. It's going to be raining all weekend. You might as well go spend some money at Guns and Gear. That's right. A home of no limit ammo. They've also got all your favorite Guns, accessories, but hey, they're way more than just a gun and accessory store. They've got uh, Cerakoting and gunsmithing available, too. And one of the most knowledgeable staffs in the industry, all right here locally on Highway 51 North in Gluckstadt. That's Guns and Gear. Shop them online at gunsandgearms.com. Sean, uh, you were telling me a second ago, and I, I saw it and. Man, I didn't leave the dealership till late last night. I had a customer in front of me till well after seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. So my, my my show prep's a little shoddy this morning, or my knowledge about some things. I mean, we can always talk Jackson trash. Three sixty five forever. But I mean, apparently it's going to be forever. Yeah, that's the that's the at the earth. Now there's a the city council has a lawsuit. They're supposed to uh, have some type of resolution or go to court or something on April seventeenth. Right. That's what I'm reading. I I tried to search for this last night after you you, you asked me to come back on the show and the uh, it looks like they filed a, what's called a deck action and that's a uh, they want the court to define each party's legal rights and I think in this situation they want the court to say has the mayor been derelict in his duties because all he's doing is proposing Richards like every time he says here's Richards vote on it and they shoot it down and then he proposes Richards again and they shoot it down so I think they're trying to circumvent that and get to vote on a on a vendor because the way it works is the mayor gets picked the vendor since city council votes on it. Mm-hmm. They, I think the city council saying all he's doing is giving us the same vendor, the vendor that he wants to vote on. We can't vote on anybody else. So they're trying to circumvent that process. And that's why they're going back to what is court. Okay. So I read another article yesterday that said that where he was saying that he didn't believe that due to the RFP with Richards, mm-hmm. what is the RFP? I keep hearing that phrase thrown around. I call those RFQs. Is there a, does RFP be request for price? I always say request for quote. I don't know what they. Okay, what, about, so, same thing, right? Same thing. Okay. That's the same thing. And uh, you know, if they're it, calling an RFP, I always in my business call it RFQ. But got you. Well, so I, I keep hearing that getting thrown around, and the, the mayor came out yesterday saying, "Well, due to the uh, the RFP with Richards, they can't just pull the plug." I, it's kind of a weird deal, right? I think that they have to submit another. I don't know the mechanics of it either but i think they have to submit another one and that process takes like 50 days or something like that okay but we were richards was doing all of this without a contract to begin with right after the mayor had put us in this position right it's yeah. an emergency contract and then we've been stuck in all this litigation for a year and again i was looking at my uh facebook memories this morning and it, i was making fun of the trash situation a year ago today again so this has all been going on for a year richards got that contract the emergency contract for a year remember they sued the city of jackson richards mm-hmm. did because they hadn't been paid on the contract that the council had never approved Approved. It was just under that emergency thing, and uh, I think they eventually the court did order for them to get paid. Which yeah. I think it's a principle of contract law called quantum merit, where they'd actually done the work, so they should have got paid. I, th- what a disaster! <laughs> it's un- it's it's a complete disaster. I, I was driving home from my offices on Lake. I mean, they just they strong armed the, the 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 garbage right, and and th- right. he knew yep. what he was doing. He's like, well, 
we will just sit on our hands and poke our lips out until we get what I want, until we get what we want. That's what exactly. That's what he's doing, and that's the problem I have. I know everybody in my neighborhood is freaking out and wants their garbage. I mean, who, who doesn't want their garbage picked up? And you and I were talking about that on the air yesterday about how we're single guys. It's easy when you live by yourself. You're not mm-hmm. producing as much trash, but you got a family of four. You're producing a pretty good bit of trash. And we well, are just the diapers. If you got younger mm-hmm. kids, I mean. Man, there's a part of me, and I know I come across like I seriously lack empathy, and I do for a lot of things. I'll be the first to admit it. Right. I mean, I'm a bit on the spectrum when it comes to lacking empathy, and it just is what it is. Mm. I I don't feel bad for a lot of these people, but I do feel bad for people who, what I call normies. Right. You know, the family of four, family of five, just work grinding every day, not paying attention to all this this crap, this culture war stuff, Mm. this, this politics stuff, and- Maybe this will wake them up too, because I don't think we we can't afford to have normies anymore. Every people need to get plugged in mm-hmm. because you have stuff like this happen when people are just living their lives, right. want, just wanting to be left alone. You know, well you, now you see what being left alone gets you. Yeah, I was a uh, I stayed at the my office is on Lakeland at behind across from El Charo behind the old pens. They knocked the old pens down my office in that building. Anyway, I stay late and was watching the news. Of, six o'clock news they had citizens they were interviewing citizens and i think you played a clip on the show Mm -hmm. yesterday this was another thing where folks were saying you know what what's the solution and one guy said he needs to resign so i think this is not working out for him the way he thought it was i want to you're 100 percent correct i want to play a clip here i have not listened to this yet but anytime the naacp and benny thompson are complaining about something in jackson i i'm all it always piques my interest because I want to see how they're trying to blame this on everybody but whose fault it actually is. Right. Had water woes in Jackson, one of many hot topics at a town hall meeting tonight. The NAACP and Representative Benny Thompson met with residents to discuss the latest developments. You may remember the organization filed a civil rights complaint last year against the Department of Environmental Quality, accusing that agency of discriminating against the city of Jackson. Thompson also launched an Real quick, I do apologize. This is about the water, not the... I have that one written down that you just yeah. played, though, actually. Okay, so good. This is about the one. water, not the trash. So I do apologize. But you know what? Hot topic. We're going to hit it, too. Investigation into how federal funding is being spent to fix water issues here in the capital city. House Bill 1020 was also discussed. It would install a new court system run by selected judges, and Capitol Police jurisdiction would expand in 2024. They're only imposing this on the city. This is Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP. Of Jackson. No other jurisdiction in the state of Mississippi will have this type of oversight in taking of local authority. That is a direct violation of equal protection. As soon as the governor signed in and all these bills, we will be filing a lawsuit that same day. Last week, the Mississippi House joined the Senate in passing a final version of the House bill, House Bill 1020, sending it to the governor's desk. As for the water crisis, $600 million in federal funds has been approved to update water infrastructure in... Sean, here's my question, man. Mm-hmm. All right, you're a Democrat. Yeah. You know, loud and proud. Right. The right. Complete opposite of me. I'm loud and proud, right wing conservative. You're not for single payer health care, Clay, or <sighs> no. <laughs> You're not no. pro shows like me either. I, right? I'm not for I am not for welfare. I'm not for none of that stuff. Gotcha. I, like, just anything. I'm a very I'm a nationalist. Don't send another penny to Ukraine. I'm going to try to convert. See, I think we need to send all the money to Ukraine. They're, they're, I mean, didn't you watch Rocky Four? I mean, these guys are bad. I mean, <laughs> like, come on. Killed I mean, Apollo I mean, Creed. Yeah, I mean, killed Apollo Creed. All right. So, I, I just at what point do do the NAACP and this free to land bunch, the Black Votes Matter bunch, the people that they have supported, the people they have got behind have got the city into this mess they're they're upset about. I mean, at what point do you take a look in the mirror and say to yourself, man, maybe we just need to sit this one out? Well, right. I watched that um, newscast last night about Derek Johnson talking about, you talking about House Bill 1020, yeah. final lawsuit. Uh, what this, how, how this got tied into water, I have no clue, uh, but, but whatever. That's what they were showing on the news, and I wrote it down talking about this was going to be a lawsuit based on equal protection. Again, we talked about this Wednesday. It's a municipal court. It's yeah. not an elected court. It's not violating the Constitution. The city, as far as I know, and I'd have to dig deeper into municipal law, but as far as I know, 
the, the city issues, I mean, the state issues the city's charter. The, the, the municipal municipalities are created because the state grants that. Mm-hmm. So the state, the state can kind of do whatever they want to do. That's uh, in governing authority. They can pass whatever they want to. They can say Capitol Police could patrol the entire state of Mississippi. I, I think they could, I think they're well within their power to do that. Yeah. And, um, so I don't know what lawsuit he's talking about, the equal protection lawsuit, because nothing, nothing's violating the state constitution as far as I can see with the current version of HB 1020. This is good information here. See, this is what I, this is what I would not know off the top of my head. That's why I can tolerate your leftist stuff. <laughs> okay. Because you, you bring good information to the table. Yeah. Um, well, now nice. the old version, Clay, I think was a problem with yeah. the, non-elected circuit court judges mm-hmm. where they were going to hear felony cases in circuit court but the municipal court I, I don't i think the state's got the power to do this yeah well, here's the thing too it's the capital right i mean I, i'm sure i'm assuming that comes with some like with, with some power for the state to say look this is the state capital we're the number we own more property here than anybody mm-hmm. i mean there's just things that we can we can do yeah i don't know specifically in the law if that allows them but i know that they do have the code allows the state to govern municipalities or pass laws related to municipalities, and that's what I think they're doing here. So I don't know. I don't know that it, anything that they've passed or HB ten twenty again is is violating the state constitution like the earlier version yeah. of it would have. Yeah, and, and and again, I made it the point the other day that as a, as a liberty minded constitutionalist, I understand the the angst with that original bill, but also understand the situation that Jackson's in mm-hmm. and the way that they gerrymander and get these terrible judges and just all the stuff they do that's got them in this situation. Like, man, you, some adults need to step in the room and help fix this mess. Absolutely. I think, uh, and I think I'm most with Jacksonians you. will all agree for the most part outside of this loud can rattling minority. Mm-hmm. I think, I think the citizens do agree. I, I mean, obviously I don't want the constitution violated. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't want the, you know, I'm a lawyer. I don't want the constitution violated, but as a citizen, as someone who owns a house on Monroe street in Bellhaven, I, I don't mind if Bruce Willis is riding a tank down the street. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine with me. So I, I don't, they got to do what they got to do. In my, if I'm Sean, the citizen of Jackson, yeah. I don't care what happens. Oh, exactly. I mean, here's the thing. You can arrest a million people. We need, we need a, we need a misdemeanor holding facility. Mm-hmm. We need a real jail and we need some judges who will do something to these criminals. Otherwise it's catch and release stuff. You can arrest them a million times. I mean, they may stay out of the capital improvement district because they don't have their night ruined. Right. By going to jail for the night. But at the end of the day, until there's some real punishment, you know, it's going to be tough. Let's take a break real sure. quick. We'll be right back live in the Clay com studios with Sean Yurtkaran. This is the Clay Edwards Show. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show live here in the Clay com studios with Sean Yurtkaran. Uh, during the break, Sean and I were talking, and we're, we're going to put off any serious conversation to the next segment, mm-hmm. top of the hour there. During the break, we were talking about just how fast Jackson has gone down um, to just being mostly uh, sections of it, like South Jackson, being unlivable in the in just 20 years, in less than a generation. Right. We've lost the city. Yep. It looks like you drive around South Jackson, it looks like a nuclear bomb went off half the time. But it's, it's, uh, it's I don't really think, sad. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say... Seventy percent of this city, we use the term third world country a lot, mm-hmm. you know, but 70 percent of the city is third world country living conditions. If you count the better part of West Jackson, right. the the 220 side of North Jackson, like if you just kept going straight here, mm-hmm. you get out there uh, that I, would it be Northwest Jackson? Right. Right. Yeah, sure. Would, so. Logistically, would that be the way to say it? Yeah. You know, going, Northwest up North, Jackson. going up North State down. Down north side, mm-hmm. uh, up past the old water uh, Lake Hyco area, all up through there. Yeah, I mean, the California Ave, yeah. all, Medgar Evers, that whole part of Jackson there around the old Jackson Mall, going back east to the Jackson Mall mm-hmm. area, and then all south and then southwest going towards Clinton. Man, it is just it, it's it, it's borderline unlivable. Yeah, like the, most yeah. of those houses wouldn't pass an inspection to live in in any other county other than Hines, mm-hmm. and it's all happened in a Within 25 years. About 25 years, yeah. It's, you know, it, I mean, it's just become absolutely unlivable. And what does that line up to, people may be asking? What happened about 25 years ago, Clay, that would have set this city going into the direction it's going in? Uh, his name is Harvey Johnson, and we have run over. We were in the break, and I'm just running my mouth. We'll be right back. 
Thanks for listening. Tune in next week as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.